We have two weeks to finish one of the biggest print installations we've ever done. We are going to be outside in the middle of August on a tarmac covering a 60 foot by 10 foot fence. We're going to be dealing with wind, we're going to be dealing with rain, we're going to be dealing with hot sun and no shade and who knows what else. This is going to be a really tough print challenge. We want to take you on a behind the scenes journey to see what it looks like to create a public art project from start to finish. We were invited by the Department of Illumination to create a project celebrating Alvars. Alvars are a biodiverse, hyper resilient ecological system that exists on exposed ancient limestone. As part of the research for this project, we actually got to immerse ourselves in the environment. We went on nature walks with naturalists and learned about the plants, insects, and all the biodiversity of the Alvars themselves. Full disclosure, because this is Artist Confessional, we did do the research before the two weeks production time. Start that two week time clock now. What are the secrets of studio practice? research done and the space understood, we now have to think about how to use that space to the best of our ability, what can we actually make in this time period, and what part of the Alvar are we excited to talk about? We decided that we wanted to work with butterflies and to create prints. The butterflies are a beautiful source of imagery and the prints are going to allow us to make multiples. Plus, there's a lot of wind up on base 31, which we thought we could use to our advantage to create motion within the piece. We're working with eight butterflies that can be found in the Ontario Alvars. The American Lady, the Acadian Hair Streak, the Black Swallowtail, the Common Ringlet, the Meadow Fertillery, the Giant Swallowtail, the Juniper Hair Streak, and the Tawny Edge Skipper. By only giving ourselves two weeks to finish this project, we knew we needed to have a really good strategy. So while I worked on drawing the butterflies in Procreate, Kyle worked on building out a plan in Notion. It can be really tough to stay on track, and so with Notion, we've been using it as a platform for our project management. Now, we've tried a whole bunch of different project management softwares over the years, and this one is right now the one that we really enjoy because of its flexibility. We created a calendar system where we could input our important dates and see them at a glance without all the other dates and all the other projects that we have going on. It has our to-do list and this is a way for us to communicate with one another the different tasks that are on hand, what status they're at and how long they've been taking and what kind of notes are associated with those different tasks. What makes this a really wonderful platform is that it allows us to be very flexible between imagery and spreadsheets and notes and kind of data tracking. Our Notion board also contains all of the imagery and resources that we have created for the project, such as these field note guide pages that we drew for the field notes guide that you would get as a visitor to the exhibition. Here you can see our paper samples. This is where we kept all the information about all the paper that we are working with, how many pieces of paper there were, what butterfly was going to get printed onto it, and what the total square foot coverage of that potentially could be. So this is the installation notes. This was all the pre-planning that went in, like how do you make sure four random sections of black and ending go up onto the fence correctly? Like this, we made a two scale template in Photoshop and we laid those things out. We laid out the butterflies and what we did is we individually layered them in Photoshop to make these mock-ups where we would count out 96 black swallowtail, 160 American lady, and we'd physically lay them out on this mock-up and we trialed it out in many different kind of tones to figure figure out which one we liked the best. Now we tried cold tones, we tried warm tones, and it was the base 31 colors that we actually settled on. We felt that they really kind of popped and had a good harmony with one another. And it was also appropriate because it was being installed at base 31. In the studio today, we are making prototypes. I've printed off three of Chrissy's designs onto just regular printer paper. What I'm trying to do here today is try to fold these in various ways to create some sort of like structure or shape. I want to see how it goes. I want to try a couple. And then from there, I'm going to learn a lot of different things, like how well they cut, kind of strategies. I'm hoping to get them under a minute. 
if we have 1,000 of these things to go, can you imagine how long that's gonna take? It's gonna take me like at least 12 hours at one minute per item. So it took me a minute and a half to cut this guy out. I'd say that this wasn't bad. In terms of lining it up and getting a cutout from it, really good. Now we're being greedy and we're gonna cut several shapes all at once. Okay, the ones that I did multiples of, they didn't turn out too bad. They have a little bit more of like a rigid geometry than the one that was like really carefully cut out, but that's okay. I'm gonna try a bunch of different designs with this one and see what I can come up with and what kind of variations we can make and just what the potential is. This being the first of many, which is just a simple two valley, one peak fold. And we'll get to figuring out how to attach them later. But for right now, let's make a bunch of these. Okay, so this is my second prototype where we have a staple going through the two valley folds to give those wings some sort of like strength and structure. And we have taken the body and we've tried to slide a cylinder into it so that we could press it down and try to round it out so it wasn't just a straight fin. Not necessarily terrible. This didn't take very long. It gives it some form. I like where the staple's going, so I'm going to expand on that idea. I'm going to take some crocheting fabric, thread. Not really sure exactly what to classify this is. I'm not a crocheter. And I'm going to use some of this to create like a tassel or something that could become the, well, the attachment part for the butterfly. I wasn't anticipating I to slide it out. Because <sighs> it's only going to work if it's wrapped around the staple. Okay. So we stapled into the back side. And at least now I have a connector. And it's attached to some sort of fabric that I can tie to these. Uh, that I can tie to the black mesh. Here are some of the design problems that I'm immediately foreseeing in this project. When it comes to fasteners, there's a couple that immediately come to mind for this project. Zip ties. Really great, really quick, high waste, and just we need hundreds of them. So, you know, buying 10 bags of 100 zip ties. String would work quite well. We could tie a loop, cut it, tie it in a knot, and then when we are finished, we just run across the entire netting with a pair of scissors and go snip, 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 and they all fall off and we throw out the string using some sort of wire, like a thin green garden wire. And we, if we cut them down into six inch chunks ahead of time and we make a thousand of those or whatever, we can have a pouch full of them. And all this would require us is to kind of bend them into a U shape to kind of fish it through the netting and then back through the bird design, twist, 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 and then it's done. You know, staples, if we could somehow get the bird to sit through the netting and then somebody staples the bird into the netting, great. Birds, ah, I keep saying birds. These are not birds, they're butterflies. The major problem with stapling is it requires a person on both sides of the netting. That means that in order to even make this, I have to stand the whole netting upright in the yard and attach it to some sort of posts so that we can actually work on both sides or jerry-rig something else up. I'm outside, I'm gonna set up a bunch of scaffolding, I'm gonna string the netting across the scaffolding, and we're gonna test out each of the prototypes. I'm trying to think of like which direction to set them up. If I put them this way versus putting them this way, which is best going to emulate a chain link fence? That's one. Second one to go. Hopefully it's a little bit easier. 
Setting up scaffolding by yourself is really awkward, and I hope I make it look somewhat less awkward. Right? Whew. I've got two sets of scaffolding now. They're side by side. We're gonna string the net from the one side here all the way to the opposite side. And we're gonna fasten it loosely. I think I'm gonna use some pipe cleaners because why not? Now I can try to actually start attaching some of these butterflies and giving some of the fasteners and some of the prototypes that we made the other day a good test run. We're gonna leave these over the weekend and see how they do. If they hold up, great. If they rip and tear, Chrissy and I have hung a whole whack of prototypes. Some have been done with wire, some have been done with string, some have been done with staples. We tried pushing the wire through the whole wing to try to create some sort of armature for it to secure itself. Now we're just gonna kind of see what happens. How long they stay up, how well they hold up, what kind of movement they get. We have like at least a little sampling patch to see how they'll interact with one another. And we're just gonna see. We're back in the shop. Today we are mixing colors. We're leading closer and closer to the actual printing phase of this adventure. Behind me there's some screens ready to go. We have eight colors to mix, so this is the selection that we'll be working from. And we're gonna try to match them as best as we possibly can. I'm gonna start with blue, because I think it's gonna be the easiest. I am using a transparent base that we purchased from a company in Toronto called Maprin. I'm gonna start with the transparent base and then I have a collection of pigments here and I'll be adding the pigment to the base to try to match the blue color as best I possibly can. While Chrissy gets the ink ready and revises the color another time, we are going to set up our printing station. I have my screen, I have some mylar, I have some other things. I have to go and grab a few things. And so I'm just gonna gather everything and get set up ready to print so that when she's done mixing that color, we can get right to it. One of the secrets of success for good printing is good registration. We use a pretty basic mylar sheet hinged onto the table, placing punched tabs. This means when we are using the mylar to register, the mylar is always going to be in the same position. We're gonna slide it underneath and I'm gonna use my eyeballs, roughly register the center line of the image. We're gonna hook the corner of the ruler to the corner of the paper and make sure that it's nice and flush. I think that's okay. I'm so excited. Today, all of my hoarding is actually gonna pay off. I've been storing all of this paper for literally years. Chrissy's mixed up an excellent blue for our common ringlet butterfly. I'm gonna get it onto the screen. We're gonna pull a couple, make sure that it's actually really what we want. And then you gotta see what printing 175 things looks like. The magic of YouTube will make it seem effortless, but it will likely be a good chunk of my afternoon. We're into the last 20 of the giant swallowtail printed in this lovely marine color that Chrissy has mixed up. Everything's been going really, really well so far. Hopefully it does and it just keeps going that way. Continue the montage.
We're into printing this purple and maybe I'm about six prints in. The ink is really loose so I can almost do this with just one hand and it's laying down a really nice flat even tone. This is the last two prints. It's been an excellent addition. There's been very little problems and I'm really excited about that. So there's a lot of butterflies to print and the easier each one of these is, well, the easier everything else is. Yesterday was a successful day in printing. Today we're back in the studio. We have three more to go before we kind of reach that like we're okay, we can actually move on to the next step phase. Yesterday my estimation is that we print somewhere around 350 to 400 butterflies. Today we have three more to go and I think we have maybe about the same amount of printing to do. So we are looking kind of ahead of schedule, actually. Chrissy has been killing it inside. She has cut out every single one I have printed. We have a whole lot of folding to do, but the folding shouldn't be too bad. It's sit, watch Netflix, fold a thousand butterflies, like quite literally, like 1,000 of these things. We'll just have to like kind of factory line that over the weekend. I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to get to something different. This isn't challenging, it's just laborious at this point. And then the very last one, and not least, 160. We had a very successful weekend. Chrissy cut and folded all of the butterflies. We reached our goal of printing everything by the end of the weekend. We are ready now, it is Monday. We have three-ish days before we have to have this project packed up in the car and heading to base 31. Our next step is to take some scaffolding and build like a mock wall in our yard and start assembling everything to the netting. The goal was that we could staple all of the butterflies to the netting, that it would be broken down into sections, we'd pack those sections up into the car and we would drive to base 31 and we would install it all and do some minor touch-ups afterwards, like a couple additional birds, fill it out where the seams are, etc. It's the middle of Tuesday. We are working through our biggest section first. We are halfway at this point. We have four of the eight different types of butterflies suspended on the netting for this 30-foot section, which I, I'm very happy that we're starting with the biggest one first because it is punishingly hot out today and we have to do this whole thing today and likely another little tiny piece if we want to stay on track and then tomorrow wednesday we're going to do the smaller large section and then another small section thursday is our install date so we are kind of on track we've broken down each of the butterflies into individual layers and we're systematically going through kind of a grid we put some loose tape marks on the netting to indicate the five foot by five foot grid marks and we're just trying to follow the pattern to the best of our ability we're not sticking 100% exactly to where the positioning of these, but it'll help us develop the overall flow, the spacing, and kind of the harmony between the eight different layers. It's a really complex project. We did it! It's Tuesday, the end of the day. We have our first section completed. There is a lot of butterflies. I actually don't know how many, but it's about half. 
I think that it turned out pretty good. There are some spots that feel a little bit empty. And so Chrissy and I are going to readjust and reevaluate our overall schematic and plan to reduce the length of the entirety down by maybe 20 feet so that we could take what is lost and kind of amalgamate it into the two big sections so that those sections feel really full and don't feel sparse. We're going to take this down and we're going to fold it up because there's threats of thunderstorms and paper plus water equals not good. So we're going to disassemble it and kind of just let it fall and fold it and hope for the best. Day two, we are both crazy exhausted and it's been two days since we've uploaded a bunch of video and realized that it's all really low resolution. So we're off to a great start today where our afternoon was also then met with what was the quickest and the littlest amount of rain while we were working on outside and now we've had to enact plan B. This is what plan B was always, which was to try to suspend it inside the studio. So we went ahead, we did that. We we're just here. We're so hot and we're so tired. We have finished both sections of netting, they're done, they're ready, and we have installation tomorrow. We have all day Thursday and most of Friday to get this installed onto the fence and then with the spare butterflies to kind of fix it up a little bit and kind of make it a little bit more punchy in some spots, but we, we did it. We got here, it's so stupidly hot and we are really exhausted and all we've done is be outside for so long now. It looks fucking fantastic. This took a lot out of us. Yeah. <sighs> yep. <laughs> Good morning. It is our first day of installation. I have all of our crap outside and we're gonna pack up our car. We're gonna head up to base 31 to do install. All week has been preparing for this. I'm really excited to see what happens and what could possibly go wrong. I opened the door, I forgot that we had a giant curtain of butterflies suspended here. Let's go take these down, come on. That's an entire day's worth of work folded up into some sort of weird pillow of butterflies.
it's up. Well, well it's, it's partially up. It's partially up. We still have to apply about 70 or 80 birds, butterflies. They're still butterflies. They're always, they've always been butterflies. This is gonna be kind of the butterflies that help fill out the shape, connect the two large pieces, and fill out the ends and just kind of finish up the piece. It took less than I thought to put up. I think it was like within an hour. It was within an hour. So it went up real fast. Plan successful. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of windy up here, not right at this moment, but uh, because it's on a fence, oh, it's doing it. You can see that it's like billowing out and moving, which is like really nice. We were, hop added element. We were hoping for something like that. Mm -hmm. So, win. Let's just start with that. It has been a long few weeks of building this installation, but we are finally installed. Today, we got everything up. We're happy. It looks really nice. There's a beautiful billowing that's happening. It's wonderful. And the rest of the installation looks really beautiful too. We will show you some shots of that. If you've not yet liked this video or subscribed to our channel, now is the time to do so. Chrissy and I have been busting our asses off to get this video completed as well as just finish an actual installation. So please, we put a lot of effort into this.